Hello, this is Patrick O'Shaughnessy, and this is the 16th module in the series Statistical Methods for Analyzing Data Obtained in the Lab or Field. And here we'll be discussing uh, a kind of specialized form of the one-way ANOVA, or it could be considered a specialized form of the two-way ANOVA, in which uh, this concept of blocking is applied. As shown in the module map here, this is a module within the grouping called Multiple Multi-Sample Testing. And um, I'm putting it off to the side of the one-way ANOVA because it's not critical to uh, review this module in order to understand the two-way ANOVA, uh, but it is advised to, to review this anyway uh, for this particular type of ANOVA analysis that is comparable to that of the paired t-test. Okay, in module 14, we talked about the randomized block design. And recall that this is a type of design when you know that there may be extenuating uh, influences on the factor that you have chosen and the different levels of it. And so these kind of this nuisance factors, as they're called, can add to uh, the total variability uh, between the levels that you're interested in. And so it'd be nice, be nice to have a method for ignoring the variability of this factor that's arbitrarily, in a sense, influencing uh, the variability of, of the different levels that you're interested in. You, you want to be able to be able to split out these levels and call them significantly different if they truly are. But if there's so much noise, so to speak, in their system that you uh, you can't do that, then uh, again, this is where uh, a block design is appropriate. So uh, again, example is, is probably more obvious than, than that, what I just stated. So let, let's start there. Now we want to compare uh, four ambient air monitors that they all measure ozone. And so say some are old, some are new, and you want to make sure that they all measure the same thing or that maybe the newer one is more accurate. And you know you're going to have to uh, do this over multiple days, but you also know that the ozone levels themselves are going to vary a lot over those 10 days, or certainly can vary. They're not gonna be nice and consistent. So then you can just tweak out, so to speak, the differences between the monitors. That's what we care about. The factor is monitor, of which there are four levels, monitor A, B, C, and D. Okay, that's what we truly are interested in. And that's a one-way analysis of variance if that's all we're we really care about, but as part of the experiment, you are aware enough to realize that the ozone levels themselves over these days uh, could add enough variability right, in your measurements that it's gonna be hard to distinguish between monitors A, B, C, and D. So, those, so the days then becomes a nuisance factor. And so we're going to block by days and then compare the measurements between the monitors made on the same day. Again, if, um, if there were only two monitors involved, monitor A and B, this would be completely and absolutely analogous to using a paired t-test as referred to in module 12. Okay, so now with the NOVA with blocking, the total error is composed of three parts, not just two. Previously, with a one-factor experiment, we had the treatment sums of squares and the error sums of squares. But now we'd like to get at the variance here of the block sum of squares. Because if this total here, if the block isn't there, then the error consists of both of them. And that much larger variance is going to be used in the denominator right of the treatment sums of squares so that's the idea behind this okay so we can compute two f values however we're going to end up with an f of the treatments over the error and or the blocks over the error in a sense we don't care whether there's a significant difference between the blocks whatever we're blocking in this case between days uh, but it can be isolated out mathematically. Okay, so now we go to our ANOVA table. You should at this point have a, an idea that something's got to be different now. And, it, and yes, there is. There's now another row. 
and there's a row now for the blocks in order to be able to isolate out their sums of squares. So I'm not showing you the equation to get at each block, but it'd be similar to those previous equations where we have to now come up with the value minus the average within the blocks rather than within each uh, level. So we have b minus 1 blocks, and we end up with the sums of squares of the blocks and a mean square to the blocks. So again, we have two f values we just saw. One is the MST divided by the MSE, and the other one is the MSB divided by the MSE. This is the one we care about. This will be the f value for the aerosol, the, the ozone monitors. Let's do an example now uh, using some numbers. So we have a different problem here. In this case, we're testing road paint quality using four different types of paint, and they're painted on four different road surfaces. And the outcome measurement is the percent reduction in paint after one month. So you see the numbers there, 9.3 is 9.3% reduction, for example. And you see I have it set up here so that paint type, which is the factor that we're concerned about, which has four levels, paint type A, B, C, and D, are in the rows, and then the road surface is, as you can see there, road surface one, two, three, and four. So that's the setup. We then can uh, do the Excel analysis, and here is the output for it. I'm gonna emphasize here that the selection you want to make in the data analysis tool pack listing is the ANOVA two-factor without replication. So I'm calling this a one-way ANOVA with blocking. So again, it depends on who you're talking to, but this is blocking is either a specialized form of the one-way ANOVA or Excel considered as a specialized form of the two-factor experiment. I, I kind of consider that to be a little misleading, but that is what you choose. Now, why without replication? Well, you can see here that if we looked at uh, our factor and the number of levels for each, we have two factors, road surface and paint type, each at four levels. So we would then multiply four by four and get 16 treatment combinations. So we have to look at you know, road surface one versus paint type A, road surface two versus paint type B, etc. And you'll notice within each of these treatment combinations, there's only one value. That's, there's no replication. And that's because we are simply kind of slicing across here uh, for the paint type uh, by, ro by road surface, slicing down, which gives us just one per treatment combination. Okay, so then we can take a look at the um, ANOVA output uh, down at the bottom here. And notice, first we're gonna go to the p-value on the rows, that's what we're interested in. And that's actually why I set it up with paint type in the rows because Excel gives you the rows first and uh, in the first row here of the ANOVA table and then column second. So we're looking at this p-value of 0 0.000871. It is certainly less than 0 0.05. Therefore, we reject the null and, ex and accept the alternative that there is a significant difference in the means of the paint types. So these averages here are significantly different. We don't know which one's significantly different from the other or whether they're all significantly different from each other one. We don't know because that's one of the downsides of the ANOVA analysis technique. We'd have to go to a multiple comparison technique as explained in the previous module to, to isolate out which one is say greater than another statistically speaking. Okay, but we can also see here that the road type, which is in the columns, uh, is also has a significant p-value. It's less than 0.05. Therefore, there is a significant difference between road surface as well. And we don't really care about that in a sense. We block by road surface, but it does tell you that it was a good idea to block between road surface, doesn't it? Uh, if they are significantly different, that means there's quite a bit of variability between road surfaces that we want to isolate out. So we can then conclude 
that it, both paint type and road surface have significantly different levels. Okay, let's take this one step further just to help emphasize what's going on when you block. And pretend that we just do a one-way ANOVA instead. Uh, we don't know anything about road surface. We didn't realize that we should block by it. And so we're just going to ignore the fact that they've been painted on four different road types. And so we're going to now we're back to a one-way ANOVA in which we have four observations for each of the four levels. And this is the output now. We're again choosing the ANOVA single factor uh, option in the data analysis. And we can see here that uh, something quite different pops up because we're going to look at the p-value that's associated here with the output and see that it is not significant. So it's 0.21 is much greater than 0.05. Uh, therefore, um, we cannot reject the null. And therefore, we can't say that there's any difference in the mean levels of the four paint types. And this is simply because we did a one-way ANOVA rather than with blocking, because we know when we blocked, there was a significant difference. So what's going on here numerically? Well, let's pull up the output for the ANOVA with blocking output. And we can see, first of all, we have to realize or remember that the MS values are resulting from the sums of squares divided by the degrees of freedom, and that the F then is the mean squared between the groups divided by the within the groups. So 0.12 divided by 0.07 equals 1.7 in this case, and that F value is compared to a uh, the F critical of the table, which is out there at 3.49. It's certainly not larger than F critical, therefore we fail to reject, uh, which is the same thing as looking at the P value. So we have these, we can go back to the sums of squares of 0.385 and 0.905. So 0.905 is all of the residual error, so to speak, uh, within the groups, within our measurements, uh, packaged into one number. Whereas you can see when we isolate out the error of the roadway, that's the columns, we end up with 0.825 which only leaves 0.08 for the within group error. So now we are dividing the MS level. You can see here for the paint 0.128, it's still 0.128. That hasn't changed. The numerator hasn't changed. It's the denominator has changed from 0.07 down to 0.009 much smaller number, which is going to make then the F value itself much, much higher from 1.7 up to 14 in this case, which again, massively reduces the P value. So this 14 is much bigger than 3.8. It's another way to look at it, right? So that, that's what's going on here is that we have pulled apart the within group sums of squares of 0.905 and lumped a whole bunch of it into the, the road variability of 0.825, which leaves us only 0.08. But if you add those two up, you're back to the 0.905 that we had originally. So again, just to let you know, mathematically, this is what's going on of this kind of pulling out uh, the variability, uh, in this case of the nuisance factor, uh, so that we can have a much, much better idea of the variability within the levels of the factor we care about.